the exhaust is only loosely on. So there may be a bit of leakage around the exhaust. Encouraging. This is the first opportunity I've had to film the bike outside uh, in daylight hours um, as it gets dark in the evenings quite quickly. You should probably have seen it's, uh, it's starting in the garage after I'd first assembled it. Sorry about the neighbour's dog. Alright, alright. I'm coming. What do you want? Hey, I thought you were a good boy. I thought you were a good boy. Are you being trouble? Oh, you are trouble. You are trouble. Hey, 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 bagel. What you doing? Right. Where was I? Oh yeah, rambling. So yeah, this is the first um, opportunity to film it outside. It has run. I have taken it for a spin around the block a few times. Um, probably put about five or six miles on it just to sort of make sure everything's bedded in. Um, it seems to be running really nicely. Um, I think the carb probably needs going through. It's a little bit on the rich side. Um, it was before I rebuilt the engine. I knew that was something that needed looking at. But um, as I knew the carb was running, the bike, I didn't want to play with that until after I'd done the engine. Um, there appear to be no major issues, as far as I can tell. Um, the... the uh, the dog's going nuts. Shush! Quiet! The decompression lever uh, needed a bit of adjustment. I'd set it up in the workshop um, and when I got it out it just was too slack so that needed a bit of an adjustment. Um, I've checked oil is getting to the head which is good. Um, it was one of the... No, no, it wasn't a concern but I was obviously aware that it could be a possibility that it wouldn't pump but it did. Um, there is one slight weep, um, nothing major, but under here, just under here, is the tiniest weep of oil. And that's coming out from the uh, gasket that fits the side cover on this one here, which is the generator side cover. Um, so I think there might be a scratch or something in the actual aluminium, so I may uh, I'll give it. I'll give it a few weeks. I mean, it's the the slightest wisp of oil on your finger um, after you've run it. Um, I'll give it a few weeks. Keep an eye on it. If the gasket doesn't expand to fill the um, fill the scratch, then I will uh, replace the gasket and put some uh, some sealant on it to help with that. Um, everything else seems pretty good. Um, oh, very good. In fact, um, I've adjusted the uh, cam chain tension. Um, it uh, certainly feels pokey when I um, throttled up hard, well not hard, hard, as I would have done previously out of the petrol station. The thing took off like a like a banshee. So I think we've gained a bit of power just by cleaning up the head and um, cleaning the valves and uh, doing the valve adjustments. That's one thing I did notice actually after running that the valves probably will need adjusting um, after 100 miles or so. Um, I put the feeler gauge on them and they're just a bit looser than they were 
in, when I set them up in the workshop so presumably that's a bit of bedding in but uh, I'll put a hundred miles on it and take it from there so yeah so um, I'll start it up outside now and uh, you can listen to it and we'll see see what you think right it's raining so I'm not going to be too long out here let's see how we get on with this I am going to pretty much wrap up this engine build with a bit of a ramble at the end of it. Um, more just to say how pleased I am with the way that it went. As I've said a hundred times, I'm not a mechanic. Um, I made some mistakes along the way, um, which I kind of expected to do. It's just the way of things. Um, I had a little bit of bad luck, which I guess would have happened to anybody. Uh, I had a lot of good luck as well. Um, so really the point uh, at the end of this video is to say that the engine's running really well. Um, I might follow this up with another video of a test ride, but um, I might wait until the weather's a bit better. Um, I want to say a few things about uh, what I found um, to be particularly useful. Um, for someone who doesn't have the full gear and the full kit but what I did do was go out and buy a few bits and bobs beforehand um, I think the most important tool to me in the whole build was probably this soft faced mallet, hammer, whatever you want to call it I mean it was just fantastic if you want to just gently persuade something into place uh, like a side case or something off like a cylinder head you could put a little bit of force behind it without worrying about breaking anything you know it's like chipping the metal or denting it um, this was brand new when I started and you can well, I don't know if you can see maybe you can maybe you can't but you know the face of the mallet's taken a bit of a beating but not the engine component so that was absolutely superb um, also brass drift um, that's proved to be essential it's, it's kind of been used a lot on this again for persuading things in persuading things out um, without damaging the parts. Um, again, the face of these um, has flattened out, mushroomed slightly. It's got dents in it where it's taken the damage and uh, the parts haven't. Um, this wasn't a proper drift. I just bought a 10 centimeter length of, uh, I think it's 10 mil brass off of eBay. It was a couple of quid. I mean, I could have spent 12, 13 quid on a proper drift with knurled grips and all the rest of it. But you know, at the end of the day, they're just a bit of brass. A uh, dental pick. Um, I saw this on a YouTube video being used for various seals and picking out rubbish and I use this an awful lot. Um, it's pretty much shot now, the tips are very delicate on it and you know after a full engine build it's pretty much done but again I think that was like a pound fifty or something, it was no money at all. Um, these little glue spatulas 
um, for the Honda Bond worked really well. Um, it didn't seem to over apply or under apply, it was, it was just about right. Um, and also the Haynes manual, um, I, I know there's another manual out there um, for the uh, Honda, um, but uh, this is the one that actually came with the bike when I bought it, the guy threw it in and, and uh, it's been very good. Um, there is one glaring error in it, which I can't remember whether I touched on in the film or in the um, video or not, but there's a section here on um, talking the case bolts and the left hand side is marked as crankcase bolt sequence 250cc and the right hand side for 500cc models they're the wrong way around um, the torque set uh, I'm, I mean I can't prove it but you know given this says 10mm bolts and this is 9mm bolts and the 250 doesn't have 10mm bolts was the first warning sign um, and secondly uh, just the diagram looks just slightly out so um, be aware of that. I went with the uh, 500cc diagram in terms of um, uh, uh, the torque settings and it's important because the uh, size of the bolts have specific torque settings so just be aware of that. Other than that though the manual has been brilliant. Um, good old flick through it uh, several times before I started the build. I mean it covers all the little specs and torques for you. It gives you it's particularly useful for setting up things like um, the timer chain and it does pre-warn you of any pitfalls you might fall into so well worth whatever it costs to buy that um, the other thing is keeping track of it the fact that I filmed it wasn't to put it on YouTube it was so that I could refer to the uh, footage um, from time to time to see what I did you know sequence of um, components coming apart um, any little thoughts I had while I was pulling it apart, any important bits that I should refer to when reassembling and I used that footage um, on several occasions and on one occasion I couldn't remember whether I fitted the valve stem oil seals I think it was and uh, it, well after I'd um, fitted the head and uh, I went back and just double checked to make sure that I wasn't going crazy and they were fitted. Um, so yeah so uh, notes taking and things like you know case case bolts I just and on all bolts really I just made a note of where they went and the size they went in my own rudimentary fashion oh and also brake cleaner I mean I don't know what I'd have done without that um, other thoughts on the build uh, I paid £60 for the vapour blasting which was a, a soft aggregate and then vapour blasting um, I didn't get the bottom case done because it still had a few bits and pieces in it and I didn't want to get too deep into that um, but everything else was done for £60 I mean the stuff looked like new when it came out um, I will warn you that you need to clean that um, really thoroughly when you get it out. I found that even if I, I cleaned it, I thought I cleaned it well, there was still a lot of aggregate in the screw threads which needed to clean out before assembly and um, there were several occasions where I screwed things in and thought oh that's graunchy I'm going to pull it back out and clean it. So yeah a good clean. Um, an airline would have been absolutely fantastic but uh, I didn't have one so in the end I went out and bought some air duster which is for cleaning keyboards and that was great for just blowing out bits of muck and water and whatever. So that works really well. Um, cost of the build, uh, more than I expected. I was caught out a little bit because I needed a new conrod. It was uh, chewed up at the uh, wrist pin end, as was the wrist pin. Um, so I had to have that sent away because that was a job that was too big for me. Um, so the cost of the wrist pin being fitted, including the parts, was 90. Um, and at the same time, I had new bearings fitted to it. Uh, which bumped it up to £154 in total for that work but that did include one of the machine, uh, one of the bearings having to be machined um, it has a, a groove cut into it that fits a, a sort of a, a locking tab if you will so um, yeah again that was an expense I wasn't expecting but you know I was expecting that there could be expenses I actually thought I might need a, to have it reboard but as it turned out that was in really good condition so no drama there, no new piston, no new rings, so I saved some money there. So what I spent on the crank I probably would have spent on piston and rings anyway, had it gone that way. Um, so the total cost uh, in terms of materials, I say total, there were some odds and sods which I, I haven't accounted for here, I've forgotten about you know, the odd nut bolt and whatever, but um, adding it up, um, just running through it, I had the, um, the drain plug re-helicoiled, uh, the drive shaft oil seal was uh, bought, there were bolts and no o-rings and adjusters, 
um, new dowel pin, um, the crank bearings and conrod we covered, uh, cam chain uh, and oil seal sets to cover all the outside of the cases, um, vapor blasting, new wrist pin, uh, new plugs as in like the, the rubber cam plug, uh, wave washers, steel pins, o-rings, more bolts, more circlips, Honda bond, expensive by the way but very good, um, oil uh, and I've included the grinding paste and stick even though the stick was a bunch of rubbish. Um, all that in total came to £440.27 um, so not stupidly expensive but you know at the same time if you found that sort of money you wouldn't be too displeased. Um, the other expenses on top of that were I had to tool up a little bit. Um, I bought a bench grinder and wire wheel um, not because I absolutely had to but because I kind of wanted one anyway um, but it did come in useful for cleaning the valves because the brass wheel I bought was um, pretty ineffective. Um, I bought two uh, inexpensive um, torque wrenches. Um, one I didn't think I had to replace but the one I had before was shockingly awful so I binned that um, and bought another one. Each of those were £25 each which again is not big money. They're not they're certainly not the best on the market but for someone who uses one once every thousand years it's I wasn't going to go and buy a snap on one um, what else did I buy some other stuff oh yeah when I snapped off the um, the bolt in the ca uh, case halves uh, I bought an extractor set a center punch and some drill bits and that was another 20 quid um, so yeah, so in total I spent £124.73 on tools, that doesn't include things like the mallet and the drift and all the other bits and pieces I mentioned before, but um, the total when you add it to the cost of the parts was £565, um, so you know, be prepared if you're going to tear into it and you know, I didn't buy that many parts to be honest, you know, new chain, new wrist pin, bearings and con rods blasting, well it's a bit of stuff. Um, but it, it does add up, you know, you think £20 here, £50 there, £100 here, before you know it you're up to sort of five, six hundred pounds um, and I do have some tools, I didn't have to buy spanners or anything like that, so, uh, or ratchet sets, to lie. I did buy a ratchet set but that was incidental, that uh, was for something else, um, I'm rambling again, so yeah, anyway, those are the costs on this particular one. Um, I kept notes as I went along, things that I shouldn't forget, um, but, you know, I need to know about that. General thoughts? Uh, yeah, very worried about doing it before I did it, um, worried about it during doing it, and worried about it even now, because although it's running beautifully and it sounds great and it rides great, you're just waiting for that thing. So I'm sure in 100, 200 miles that those, those worries will dissipate as the miles go on. Um, but again, inexperience, and that's what it is, inexperience. I don't know whether something's right or wrong. It's all a case of just feel it, feel it through. So, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed, actually, well, I hope you've enjoyed bits of it. A lot of it's boring rambling like this. Um, there's hours of footage, and I edited it as much as I could. So a lot of it's me fetching around for tools and stuff, which I've cut out, and I missed a couple of bits. I'm really sorry, I somehow... I missed removing the piston and putting the piston back on and it looks like possibly like I might have bodged something or done something wrong but it's just one of those jobs where it's kind of one of those key parts and you're in, a, in the flow of things and, and you just do it and then afterwards you think God, I should have filmed that you know and there's probably a couple of little things I've missed um, along the way that I haven't filmed um, and for that I apologize but literally there is enough stuff on there to bore anyone half to death but uh, if you have sat through it and watched it, then, you know, thanks for doing that. It's, um, yeah. Anyway, right, I'm going to sign out. And maybe in a few weeks I'll, um, I'll put that road test uh, or a road ride video on if anyone's interested.